Good evening, friends, fiends, and night owl supremes. Welcome to A Bit Late. I hope you're having an enchanted evening tonight because we're reading The Enchanted Knife. It's from the book The Violet Fairy Book, and I have some violet blueberry tea here to celebrate. Well, not celebrate, just sort of, it's a happy coincidence, right? Right. Anyway, get ensconced in your blanket fort, summon your animal familiars, light those candles, get everything you need to get ready for tonight's fairy tale, The Enchanted Knife. Once upon a time, there lived a young man who vowed he would never marry any girl who had not royal blood in her veins. <laughs> cool. It's got high expectations. Okay. One day, he plucked up all his courage and went to the palace to ask the emperor for his daughter. Okay. Like, it never said how much royal blood, like how far of a descendant, but he's just going right to the source. Okay. The emperor was not much pleased at the thought of such a match for his only child, but being very polite, he only said, Very well, my son, if you can win the princess, you shall have her, and the conditions are these. But what if the princess doesn't want to marry him? <sighs> anyway, in eight days, you must manage to tame and bring me three horses that have never had a master. The first is pure white, the second a foxy red with a black head, and the third coal black with a white head and feet. And besides that, you must also bring as a present to the Empress, my wife, as much gold as the three horses can carry. The young man listened in dismay to these words, I'm sure. But with an effort, he thanked the Emperor for his kindness and left the palace, wondering how he was going to fulfill the task allotted to him. Luckily for him, the emperor's daughter had overheard everything her father had said, and peeping through a curtain, she had seen the youth and thought him handsomer than anyone she had ever beheld. Okay, so I think she likes the arrangement. Cool. Although, this was the tale of Beauty and the Beast, the author would be like, well, you know, you can't just go for looks, you gotta go for a kind heart, etc. We don't know anything about this guy other than he looks really handsome. And he's got a lot of courage, or ego. Hmm? Same thing? Maybe? Depends, right? Anyway. So, returning hastily to her room, she wrote him a letter which she gave to a trusty servant to deliver, begging her wooer to come to her rooms early the next day to undertake nothing without her advice. <laughs> sure. If he ever wished her to be his wife. That night, when her father was asleep, she crept softly into his chamber well, that's not what she said to do, and took out an enchanted knife from the chest where he kept his treasures. Ah, she's not sneaking into the suitor's room, to dad's room, got it. And hid it carefully in a safe place before she went to bed. The sun had hardly risen the following morning when the princess's nurse brought the young man to her apartments. Scandal! Neither spoke for some minutes, but stood holding each other's hands for joy, till at last they both cried out that nothing but death should part them. Interesting. So before this, though, the man didn't even know what the woman looked like. I guess they're both pleasing to each other. <laughs> I love fairy tales. Then the maiden said, Take my horse and ride straight through the wood towards the sunset till you come to a hill with three peaks. When you get there, first turn to the right. Then to the left, and you will find yourself in a sun meadow where many horses are feeding. Out of these, you must pick out the three described to you by my father. If they prove shy and refuse to let you get near them, draw out your knife and let the sun shine on it so that the whole meadow is lit up by its rays. Wow, enchanted. And the horses will then approach you of their own accord and will let you lead them away. When you have them safely, look about till you see a cypress tree whose roots are of brass, whose boughs are of silver, and whose leaves are of gold. Oh, that sounds really pretty, actually. Go to it, and cut away the roots with your knife, and you will come to countless bags of gold. Load the horses with all they can carry and return to my father and tell him that you have done your task and can claim me for your wife. I mean, or you could just gather the leaves of the cypress tree I'm sure they're not really gold, I'm sure it's the color of the leaf, but what if they were gold? That'd be really cool too. A tree made of metals. The princess had finished all she had to say and now it depended on the young man to do his part. He hid the knife in the folds of his girdle, mounted his horse, and rode off in search of the meadow. 
This he found without much difficulty, but the horses were all so shy that they galloped away directly he approached them. Then he drew his knife and held it up towards the sun and directly there shone such a glory that the whole meadow was bathed in it. Oh, that would be really pretty though to see. From all sides the horses pressing round, each one that passed fell on its knees to do him honor. So everything is working out exactly as the princess said it would. But he only chose from them all the three that the emperor had described. These he secured by silken rope to his own horse and then looked about for the cypress tree. It was standing by itself in one corner and in a moment he was beside it, tearing away the earth with his knife. Deeper and deeper he dug till far down, below the roots of the brass, his knife struck upon the buried treasure, which lay heaped up in bags all around. It's a lot of digging with a knife. With a great effort, he lifted them from their hiding place and laid them one by one on his horse's backs. And when they could carry no more, he led them back to the emperor. And when the emperor saw him, he wondered, but never guessed how it was that the young man had been too clever for him, till the betrothal ceremony was over. <laughs> then he asked his newly made son-in-law what dowry he would require with his bride. To which the bridegroom made an answer, Noble Emperor, all I desire is that I may have your daughter for my wife and enjoy forever the use of your enchanted knife. <laughs> the end. Well, that was a short little story with a lot of really pretty descriptions of meadows and horses and trees made of gold, bronze, and silver. Kind of really like that visual a lot. <laughs> Poor Emperor, too, though. Well, I don't know, but I mean, he got a lot of gold and some new horses, but... Hey, buddy, I don't think you're good for my daughter. Oh my gosh, you actually did what I thought you couldn't do? Uh, 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 now I have to pay you to marry my daughter? That's still really weird to me, but... <laughs> Joke's on him, his daughter was in on this the whole time. I love it. But yeah, this story was so short, so sweet. Everything that happened, happened exactly the way the princess thought it would. And it's a happily ever after. Awesome! So... That was The Enchanted Knife. I hope you enjoyed the telling of it and that your evening is a little bit better than before we started or your day is just going swimmingly and everything is going okay. But now, off to sleep and dream what you will or stay a while and enjoy another tale. Whichever you choose, I'll speak to you again. And until then, stay spooky, my friends. Good night.